Okay, so we're going to go over final picks and bans, team comps, and general matchup uh, suggestions here. Blue team has banned out Braum, Brand, and Tristana. I've mentioned a number of times on stream that I think Braum is phenomenal in organized teams, but pretty shitty in solo queue, only because of his lack of early game kill potential. That being said, I understand why you might not want to deal with it, because it, it scales well when played properly. Brand, though, that seems a really odd ban, and I'm going to guess that it's a target ban, only because, like, how often does Brand get played? It's super rare. Uh, then they, on the other team, banned out Morgana, Kale, and Jax. All good bans right now, especially with Kale having been freshly buffed. And, of course, Jax being freshly buffed as well can make him... In terms of picks, they have what appears to be a Cannon mid, Rumble top, a Thresh, Caitlyn bot lane, and an Amumu jungle. I actually really, really like Blue Team's team comp. They have a lot of potential to make things work for them. Uh, between the AoE CC on Amumu, and uh, Cannon just comboing in together with Thresh, and then Rumble alting across it, as well as the just general lane safety of most of these champions. Uh, that being said, they're going to be facing into a Diana mid, Wukong top. Okay, I'm used to seeing Wukong jungle. But yeah, Wukong top, a Zyra jinx bot lane, and a Vi jungle. Um, similar idea, a lot of knockups on this team. I'm surprised no one went Yasuo. If Diana was playing Yasuo, this would be a terrifying team comp. Because, well, you lead in with a Vi alt, Wukong alt, Zyra alt, well, Yasuo's alting on top. Jinx can just rocket across it with both both her Q rockets and her ultimate rocket, and just wombo them into the ground. Um, Diana is pretty much the only odd man out in terms of this team comp. The other four are phenomenally well synergized if they play properly. Um, that being said, Diana can deal with Cannon if if he gets ahead. Sorry, if she gets ahead. But if Cannon starts to, to pull pull ahead in items, farm levels, that sort of stuff, Cannon is just going to be able to dominate Diana. Because every time Diana is going to go in, he's just going to stun and walk away, or just return damage uh, after the stun. So honestly, I give that matchup over to Cannon versus Diana. I would give the R Rumble a slight advantage versus Wukong if he plays properly, especially given he's running Ignite. But these lanes, they, they could honestly go any way. It boils down to how people play more so than just hard counters here. I just, I don't know, maybe it's just I've seen too many bad Diana players, but Diana just is not a very reliable mid laner right now. And that's my opinion on that. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. Bot lane, Jinx, and Zyra. They're going to do a shit ton of damage if they play that well. And I'm terrified for the opposite team if they get at all ahead. Because, well, let's face it, Jinx does a lot of damage. I mean, they've nerfed her a number of times, and she's not that top, top tier AD carry that she used to be. But if she's not getting a hard engaged on, if she's able to dodge out of the Thresh hooks, she's going to output a huge amount of DPS. And of course, Zyra, Zyra can out damage an AD carry just on her own. So if they pull ahead, if they're landing their combos, that's terrifying. It's, it's huge, huge amounts of damage. Another thing to keep in mind is Zyra, technically speaking, is the number one counter to Thresh. Because you can block hooks with, with plants, you can counter his engages with just like getting him trapped inside CC and plants and the, the crazy DPS it offers. But it's not a face roll counter. It's not a, I picked it, therefore I win. It's a, now I have to play perfectly if I want to win. Oh, happy birthday, Diego. Hopefully it goes well for you. Report Caitlyn no skin. Oh, that's so rude. Yeah, this is going to take a little while to load, so if you guys have a couple questions in chat, I can try and answer those while we get into match. One of the things I'm excited to see here, though, is how the Vi Amumu matchup goes on. Because Amumu is... it's an amazing jungle pick. People have forgotten how powerful Amumu is when played properly, and how amazing he is in, uh, in solo queue. He punishes mispositioning perfectly. He's just... he's a phenomenal pick. I love it. Uh, that being said, he is still kind of weak to counter jungling. So I want to see how they play this, if they're able to get that early advantage, and if they're able to shut him down. But, given the itemization changes, you don't really shut down Amumu. You can set him behind, you can make his ganks a little later, but he's still going to be useful. So I I'm excited to see how this matchup goes, and how they try and play it. Welcome to 
Alright, so a lot of protection coming out for the jungle. I want to see Wukong protecting the red buff. Looks like he is going to. I would usually expect to see you standing behind red buff here, but eh, to each their own. It doesn't really matter. Early, early ward going down onto that bush, making sure they can't uh, invade. It's a very friendly chat popping up here. In terms of starting items, um, I'm actually surprised. No support. Oh no, he, he's gone for the gold start mastery. Uh, so yeah, four pots, that's what I run on Thresh. Uh, on Zyra, I would expect her to have the points in utility so that she's going to get some extra auto attack harass gold. And so she can start with uh, three biscuits, one mana pot, because she's very mana hungry. That's a, a little bit of miscommunication in my opinion. Alright, Diana delays the leash a little bit. She should not be missing any experience here though. I really want to keep an eye on how this lane goes because this is a tough matchup for Diana to learn to play because, well, it's ranged versus melee and those are always painful. Diana pretty much just needs to survive until 6 and try and poke down with her, her Crescent Sweep any chance she gets. Uh, if she gets any sort of an early gank or if she gets any sort of an early advantage, I would expect her to be able to burst very, very heavily, but, well, um, Kennen always has ways to get back in if he plays proper. I'm also a little bit surprised with this build from Kennen. I would expect to see uh, a Doran's Blade. Doran's Blade is still very, very strong on him because he has a little bit of AD scaling, but mostly you're just worried about the, the sustain and making sure that you can poke with auto attacks. Similar idea to like in Nidalee, right? You really want to abuse them early. Ooh, actually, let's rewind that. Alright, so Caitlyn landing a good amount of damage with her poke and her Piltover Peacemaker. They hit level 2. Thresh moves up and very nice hook onto Zyra. I'm not sure why Zyra positioned in that manner. Uh, she just walked directly across her minion wave and into the hook. Uh, I would have been backing out this way so that you can run away from the minions so you're not going to take the damage from them and so that you're not going to be in range for the hook. Still, good reaction time from Thresh and nice combo. Alright, so as you can see, a lot of damage being laid onto Diana here. He has his mark ready. Uh, generally, you, you want to, anytime you have that mark, throw a quick auto attack, Q, W, and you're going to stun them. Or at least just deal a lot of damage in this case. I'm a little bit surprised Wukong started with a, a W so early. Ooh, a lane gank coming in here. Uh, she should be able to sneak into the second set of bushes there. A Mumu coming in from the side. Not quite ready on the decoy. Lends a knock up onto a Mumu. The clone is here. The clone is here. Flash goes through. Followed up with another flash. He should be able to E auto attack. And that's a double buff over to Wukong. That's not something you want to see happen. Uh, that was a very, very well played counter gank. I'm uh, really proud of that. Alright, so not responding to the Mias. You, you had vision on them there. And you just way overstayed. He does get the kill, but is taken down by Ignite. Actually, sorry, it's the red buff that gets the kill at the end. So, definitely watch the map a little bit more there, Kennen. You knew that they were there, right? What else are they going to do besides gank you? Having said, he returns a kill for himself, so it's not the end of the world. If Diana had lived through that, he would have come back and been one or more levels down, as well as a significant amount of CS. So that then would have pretty much spelled the end of landing phase for him. It's poor Rumble, though. Uh, is versus a double buff now. Landing a lot of damage, though. Very nice. Does not have any potions left, but does have Ignite. So one more combo, and an Ignite would allow him to pick up the kill. Lands the slow, lands the flame spitter. I want to see you using... Okay. What I would have done there is when you saw him move in, activate your shield, step forward so the flame spitter, spitter is still burning, and then when he comes out of stealth, auto attack... Ignite auto attack, I think would have got you the kill. Beast 
a right, very nice combo from Mumu. Not rushing the ignite. Good work. Just ignite it here. Good job. Vi with another phenomenal counter gank. I have nothing but praise for her counter gank so far. They're beautiful. Great job, Vi. Back in mid lane, Diana's just kind of going toe to toe, taking a little bit more damage than I might like to see. Alright, so once she hits level 6, that's really going to be what we need to pay attention to here, because that's when she has kill potential. Down in bot lane, Caitlyn taken very low. Uh, Jinx, only level 4 though. Uh, they're just going to back out. Kennen landing his ult because he does hit level up first. Oh, he doesn't follow it up though. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Alright, so you need to be aware of your, the range on your ult and you need to be counting how many stacks they have. As soon as that went through, he could have stepped forward, auto attack queued, or done any skill actually, and he would have got the kill. Unfortunately, he didn't have his ignite up. So it's not the end of the world him backing out because he is going to continue building up an experience advantage and uh, he's forced him out of lane. That being said, little bit sloppy. Up top, Rumble landing some good pressure onto this Wukong. Yes, Kennen definitely does have the better level 6, but Diana really has nothing before level 6. She's so ultimate reliant. Alright, Mumu just sort of dancing around bot lane. He is standing on a ward though, so He's just going to back out, pick up some farm for himself. Now I want to take a moment to talk about the counter ganks. I, I had nothing but praise for, for Vi and Mumu and how they're showing up where they need to be. But I want to remind people in chat, the jungler's job is to know where the other jungler is, pretty much, right? You always need to be aware of where should my uh, opposing jungler be. You then have the decision, well you have three decisions. Should I counter gank? So show up where they're ganking and ruin it for them. Or, should I counter jungle them, so say, oh, they're, they're not here, I can take away a buff, or I can take away their farm, or I can take away an objective by counter jungling. Or, the third choice is to call the play for your team and then gank elsewhere because they can't stop you from ganking. So it's a lot of mind games. It's back and forth of where are they, where should I be, and what's the most effective use of my time. I suppose the fourth option is to say, fuck it, I can't fight them, and just farm your own jungle. Um, but generally, the, the first three are what you're trying to do. Ivai is coming in bot lane, does have the alt. Uh, they get caught out by the traps though, and they just back out. Yeah, up in top lane, Wukong just not quite able to land enough damage. Um, looks like he's going for the early... Um, uh, let's back that up, sorry. Top lane looked to be going for the early haunting guys. I'm surprised. I would expect him to go for her arm guard with Wukong dealing so much damage. So you see there, Diana engages, but that leaves him free to just alt. Unfortunately, doesn't land the Q. I would have waited until you landed the stun, so you're guaranteed to land the Q. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You have the ignite on. You're going to just use your W. Free kill over to you. Vi coming in from the side. Let's see if she's able to land anything. She does have her alt still, and he has nothing left. No, not going to be able to land that, so she opts to just take the farm. I know that he's rushing Leandries. I just think that in this matchup, an arm guard might be a more consistent choice, because it gives you such cheap stats and ensures that you survive lane and don't give up any advantage to Wukong, because Wukong snowballs very heavily. I understand what he's doing, I'm simply trying to provide a second option, essentially, right? I saw another beautiful counter gank here. Amumu's in the bush, Vi's coming in. They're waiting until they see Vi, pretty much. Amumu is level 6. If Wukong tries to jump in here, I would expect Amumu to just jump in, flash alt. Alright, so there's the, the double alts. Lens the combo. Not able to combo in time, though. And as a result, he's going to get taken down. Nice play, actually, from purple side. I like the idea of that bait, but Amumu was a little low to try and do that. Now let's rewind and watch the fight bot. 
All right, so pretty much exactly what we would expect. Caitlyn has ultimate. Jinx overstays a little too much, takes a free auto attack, then backs out. But at that point, you can just alt if she really needs to. Oh, Thresh landing a very nice hook, actually. Boom. Alright, Zyra needed to step forward a little faster. She instead clicked a minion and got her pathing blocked. Um, but on Jinx's side, you can't play like that. You need to be really, really careful on those plays. Yeah, you're versus a Caitlyn. You can't really afford to do that. I'm not sure why you would try to do that. No one's ganking for you, so why would you flash alt there? Alright, that being said, I'm a little surprised Caitlyn's staying and fighting. A lot of plant damage, uh, but Thresh is going to pick up the kill. So Sloppy from Zyra. Oh, I see. I guess they were trying to set up the Jinx ultimate, but I don't agree with that fight. I really, really don't. Why take the risk when you don't have to? The thing to remember is that armor is more and more effective the more you have, right? So if he's building armor pen, you still have to build armor, or you're just letting him amplify his damage versus you. So anytime Diana is going to engage, we're going to see Cannon just throwing down his ultimate and pretty much just walking away. Now Vi is coming in from the side. There is no wards on this. So what I would expect to see happen here is Vi is going to stay in this bush, J uh, not Jinx, blah, blah. Diana should move in a little bit, and then when Cannon tries to counter-engage and land any damage, Vi would start charging up now. Exactly what I would expect to see. Worst case scenario, she could have, um, she could have flash queued. Didn't need to happen though. They get the flash off of Cannon, and that's a successful gank. At this point though, Diana does need to go back. She's a little too low to stay in this lane. I actually don't like Rylai's on Rumble. It's fine as a, a late game opportunity like to, to get some health, but your E already slows. Your w, your, your, sorry, your, your Q is already AoE. So I guess you're just looking at your alt, but that already slows. So what are you using the Rylai's for? You're using it for the health. So why not just buy a health item? I really don't like Rylai's on Rumble. The question of when do I buy Rylai's is, do I have multiple single target skills do I want to kite? Do I want tank items? And do my skills already have CC on them? Right? There, there's a lot of questions to answer before Rylice is really a good option. A good example would be like Brand. He has an E, that's a single target skill. He has no slows in his kit, and his combo can be awkward to land. So Vi tries to go in here and ends up getting herself caught 1v3. The Wukong teleport was coming in, but she just went in too early. I would have liked to see her wait just a little bit longer. That being said, she's going to land the kill over onto Caitlyn pretty much immediately. Mumu ult comes in. Wukong then is going to follow up. Alt goes through. Vi is going to be able to land her uh, her uh, strike across this and use her Q to, to knock Mumu back, making sure that Mumu lands the full amount of damage. So that's very nice communication between those two. I simply wish that Vi would have waited that extra one or two seconds for Wukong to get in position. But either way, great, great play. As I said, it's an okay as a late game option, but I'm explaining why it is not as good as people seem to think. A lot of damage being landed down bot lane just because of the poke potential of purple side, but not able to get anything from it. Yeah, Kennen just being a ranged versus melee lane is picking up a huge CS advantage, 
and uh, forcing Diana to play really carefully. Uh, Diana's play to get back into this, though, has to be ganking. She has to be roaming. Yes, uh, again, we're, I'm done this debate with Rylai's. I'm saying that it's not worth rushing because it doesn't give you any good effect. You like it for the stats, but they nerf the health on it. So why not just build a health item? They removed 100 of the health that it had in the last patch. Yes, it has more AP now, but I don't know. I don't think that's a good option. Uh, let's rewatch this fight, but I'm, I'm getting sidetracked by chat here. You guys are welcome to your opinions. If you really think it's an amazing option, go for it. I'm simply explaining why it's not. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Thresh landing another good hook onto Jinx. Pulls in, flays backwards, drops his ult. That's exactly how you want to land that combo. Caitlyn, standing way too close to traps, though. You don't want to stand that close. Uh, Thresh should be able to just pick this up on his own, though, with auto attacks. I would expect to see him moving between these. Okay, so give that over to Caitlyn ult. Yeah, so you're just standing too close to plants. Caitlyn should actually be clearing those out. I survived back up top lane here. Okay, so, tower does go down. So the gold is actually still quite close, and that's boiling down to this Vi. She's landing so many kills. Uh, it's going really, really well for her and her team. Uh, just taking a look at things, I would almost suggest that Vi go damage, and that's not usually something I would suggest, and it's not something I'm suggesting lightly, but my reasoning is that Diana's already shut down, so why not have Diana build tanky and act as essen essentially an interrupter, right? Use your, use your Moonfall, jump on their carries, be a distraction, and then have Vi go for damage. Alright, so she misses her uh, Crescent, but it doesn't matter because she is able to stay onto a Mumu. A Mumu goes in with Alt trying to set up a fight for Kennen. Kennen then Alts and should be able to land this kill back. Uh, Kennen, though, you do want to move between your auto attacks. A little bit of a misplay that I'm seeing there. Nice flash coming out, though, saving Diana. Uh, that would have been a free kill, though, if he simply moved between his auto attacks. Alright, uh, so same complaint, Jinx just really needs to watch on her positioning and not engage on fights that she doesn't want. Alright, so here we see they are going to call for the dragon. They actually don't... Oh, no, my, that's their own word. Blah, blah, blah. They have the numbers for this, but they're a little scared to do it just because Vi is so fed. Uh, Vi does not quite land the sweeper. Cannon going a little too deep. His hourglass is not finished, so this is a very dangerous position for him to be in. Uh, we see Jinx going in. Vi ultimate drops. 
Caitlyn landing as much damage as she can, but is it going to be enough? No, that is a kill over on to Cannon. Uh, we see Zyra now coming around from the side. Zyra should be able to disengage this fight. That hook... Yeah, it's going to go around to Diana. The crit, though, does pick up the kill on to Vi. Now, Caitlyn, oh my god, she's so trapped in the middle of the, the Zyra combo. Flashes out, though, just in time. Amumu now actually walking back into the plants. Uh, the alt does still connect, but not enough to kill them. But now Wukong is here. Wukong is going to be able to land this alt. They need to back out. And that pretty much just boils down to um, the, the catch that they landed onto him. Alright, Wukong is going to get taken down. Looks like Diana's not actually going to be able to land that kill, though. Yeah, she tries to do some fancy play there with the, uh, the alt reset, but not going to happen. They need to go ahead and take this dragon for themselves. In the meantime, Rumble is applying pressure top. Why aren't you taking dragon? Okay, so, you had four people here. Just take the dragon. You know you're losing top lane, right? I, I just don't know what they're doing here. That seems quite poor. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with the cannon revolver rush, but you can build what he wants. Alright, so the re-engage happening here from Diana. Lands the knockback, uh, but he just get taken down immediately by the alt. And that's the troubles with trying to dive onto a cannon. He also has hourglass finish now, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Zara is coming around. Ooh. That would have been bad if he got uh, caught out there. Alright, so we see some good siege coming in from purple side here. Uh, knowing that the alt is down on Ken and gives him a little bit of a layer of security. That being said, Caitlyn is in the middle of pushing in bot lane. Alright, Thrust just dropping a pink on Dragon. Again, I really don't know why they would have left that up. Oh god, I can't scroll to that side. They do land a good amount of damage onto Cannon. Not quite able to land it, the kill, though. Thresh hooks a minion. Right, a lot of stalling and air ramming coming out here. Uh, tries to land the hook. Not able to land the Wukong alt, though, onto Caitlyn. Caitlyn just nets away. Right, Rumble is coming in from behind, and Cannon's almost here. Once they get here, I would expect to see blue team trying to force a fight. Because Amumu does have alt. All they need is a Thresh hook or an Amumu binding, and they can land something here. Very nice hook onto Vi, who's actually the priority target right now. Cannon flashes in, drops his alt, and should immediately be able to pop into Hourglass. There it is. Takes a lot of damage first, though, so that's something he needs to be careful of. Uh, Caitlyn, a little bit far behind the team, but is able to land a good amount of damage at the end of the day. Uh, Ignite goes down, but not able to finish off Cannon. Caitlyn's going to net backwards, and p should be able to pick up the kill onto Zyra. So that ended up being a 5 for 1 engage, and that was all set up by uh, really good teamwork. Just the thresh hook into the very decisive flash alt from Cannon really set that up for them. Yeah, I don't like the blasting wand on Zyra. Someone in chat's mentioning it, and I completely agree. If you're going AP on Zyra, if you're going damage, you actually go for Magic Pen. Magic Pen is what you care about. You care about the Landry's Torment. You care about um, Rylize is actually pretty decent because it reapplies with your plant slow. Um, it, it's all right. It's not the best item, but it, it works, sort of. Um, and then after that, you can worry about uh, Death Cap or Hourglass. And this is what I mentioned in the pregame. Blue team has such a good wombo combo. Whereas the enemy team is more focused on pick potential. Catching people out, and then killing them. Yeah, Janna's support is phenomenal versus Cannon. But what you have to be careful of is what happens when they pick Morgana, and then you can't kill them because they, they're black shielded. I actually did that in a ranked team once. I was like, I'm going to play Janna. They picked Cannon. And then they locked Morgana, and we lost every single fight to Morgana black shields. I'm assuming he used his W before he alt zoned because uh, he wanted the cooldown back up. I don't know how long the cooldown is on it, though. Let me double check that. Yeah, it's five seconds, so it would have been back up after. 
There's nothing wrong with using W first. Alright, trying to land some hooks here, not able to follow through though. Wukong trying to stealth in to land the alt, but you have to remember, blue team is ahead. You don't really want to fight them, they have a better wombo combo than you. The only time it's going to work is, let's say, if Wukong gets enough damage that he can one-shot Caitlyn. Right? If he can one-shot Caitlyn at the very beginning of the fight, and he just might right here. Very nice Zyra alt comboed on top of that. Wukong going back into his team, but then a little bit indecisive, so they don't finish off Caitlyn. Zyra getting a little bit too close gets caught out. Jinx taking a hell of a lot of damage from the cannon. Cannon's just destroying them here in terms of damage. Alright, Rumble still in the fight, just constantly poking away, uh, bursting down everything she can do here. Diana tries to go back aggressive. Uh, she is 1v4 though. Wukong coming back in. She was still trying to chase the Caitlyn, not able to land anything off of that. And that's going to be another fight in blue team's favor. And that's what I was saying, like, even if you land a really good engage, unless you, let's say, get two immediate kills. So let's say uh, Vi alts, Jinx alts, and Wukong alts, and you get both of their carries. You, you zero out Caitlyn and uh, Cannon. Well, Rumble and Amumu can still kind of disengage that fight. Where did Wukong come from? He was chasing Caitlyn because he, he went pretty deep there. Alright, so another cannon alt here, just landing a very nice engage. Hook goes through onto Vi. Those hooks have been on point. Nice job, Thresh. In the meantime, Diana is coming in from behind. Vi alt goes down onto the support, unfortunately. Uh, Cannon's still just dealing as much damage as he can. Caitlyn alt comes through, picks up the support. Oh, no, sorry, Vi, what am I saying? Blech. And that's just the, the wombo combo that blue team has. And this is why I said they have a more consistent team comp. Alright, so Wukong trying to go in behind, but you're 1v4. You're 1v5, hell. No, you don't want that. Alright, so he, he wastes his ult, he wastes his flash, not able to land anything off of it. Alright, they're just going to take away Dragon for themselves. Continuing to boost their gold advantage. They're about 9k up right now. So, we've already proven that they have the better team fight. We already pr have proven that they're working together better as a team. And we've proven that they are ahead in items and levels. So what I would like to see happen here is maybe even force a Baron. Because let's take a look at the team comps. It's AoE. What happens at Baron? They funnel in to try and fight you. So all they need to do, and they already have some wards uh, ready to go here on the enemy red buff, clear out some vision, drop a quick pink ward so that you can see Wukong approaching, and then bait a Baron fight. You don't even have to do the Baron. If they come stop you, you kill them. If they don't come stop you, then you take Baron. Alright, so we see the Hourglass going through from Diana. Vi engages, but again, it's on to the support. That leaves Kennen free to just jump into the middle of the team, landing a lot of damage. He gets bursted down very quickly, though, and is not able to Hourglass in time. Wukong landing a beautiful alt, and they actually goes in favor of Purple Team. And that's what I said, if they burst down priority targets very, very quickly, they do have a shot. It's not a great shot, but they have one. The alt connecting through onto Diana, no one blocks that out. A little bit poor communication there. By not quite able to connect. And of course that still goes back towards blue team. So that ends up being uh, 3 for 2. So slightly in purple team's favor. But they would need to land another 5 or 6 fights like that before it's really going to mean, mean that much.
My dragon's not up, so I guess they're just gonna try and clear out the bot lane farm. In the meantime, Wukong does steal away blue. Nice mini advantage, but it's it's just not much. It's not enough. Alright, so again, I want to see them trying to force a, a large objective such as Baron or Inhib. Baron would be the better choice though, because they don't necessarily want to turret dive. But they do want a grouped team fight. And Baron forces that. Alright, so there we do see the uh, the Baron call go through. There's a pink ward on that. I would actually be pinking this bush yourself before you try and do this, because you need to watch for Wukong engaging onto you. That's pretty much the only thing that would turn this uh, into a bad play, is if, Wuk if you let Wukong land like a 5-man alt. Alright, they pick up the Baron very, very quickly though, as no one responds in time. Alright, so it looks like they are going to go back. They did get taken a little bit low, but uh, I honestly think they could have just ended after that Baron. Yeah, no one really wants to end this here. So one of the main issues here is that the enemy team does have a decent number of defenses built up. Uh, there's two Ninja Tabby, there's two Hourglasses, there's a Locket, there's a lot of armor, and Jinx does not have a Last Whisper yet. That's really going to be important if she wants to have much of an effect here. Uh, Wukong does have the Black Cleaver though, and that's a very good option, because it's going to allow him to shred with his ult, and uh, essentially buff up the damage that his team can deal. Alright, so we see some pinks going down on the bot tower. Looks like Caitlyn's going to try and split push that out. So I would hope that blue team would be aware of what's happening and not get caught and, and baited into a team fight here. Uh, I'm not saying they couldn't 4v5, but it would be a risk that they should not have to take. Alright, so that's a tower over to blue side, and... Uh, yeah, not able to land anything onto Wukong there. Rumble, quite a lone mid lane. Uh, looks like the rest of the blue team's gonna try and collapse and try and save him here. Vi dashing away. Okay, so can Rumble land the hook? The flash goes down. The talisman is used. Looks like he's really trying to make sure that this lands. Lands the flay to lead. Then hooks in, lands it onto Diana. Okay, so while that was nicely played, and they do get the flash from Diana, so that's totally worth it, uh, I think they could have landed that hook a little bit earlier and forced an end to the game as a result. So what I want to see here is uh, Caitlyn just sieging this tower. Drop some wards over. You have one. Good. Uh, actually, they have both sides warded. Perfect. Another good hook, but team's just not in a position to follow up. With the number of hourglasses they have and with the amount of AoE they have, a turret dive wouldn't be the end of the world. That being said, it's a risk they really don't have to take here. Vi going deep onto... Yeah. They, they go deep, but it doesn't matter because Caitlyn's there to cover it. They do get the, the flash, though. So that means that he's not going to be able to dive immediately onto the back line if something lands. I don't personally agree with the gunblade choice on him, but to each his own.
Alright, Caitlyn's back pushing bot lane. Her positioning has been quite good this game. I am not seeing anyone trying to hold bot, uh, sorry, top lane. Uh, it's not an issue, but it is something to at least be aware of and keep an eye on. Alright, hook lands onto Diana. Alt goes through. Let's just lower that. Uh, okay, so, Mumu lands his alt onto pretty much everyone. Caitlyn alt, not quite able to land the kill. I'm waiting to see where he lands his alt here. A little bit later than I might expect. Wukong able to get onto your carries. That's something that you don't generally want to have happen. And uh, Amumu does get taken down. In that entire fight, Cannon was not there. So that's something you need to keep in mind and be very careful of. I also would have flayed backwards so that you're not going to take as much damage from the Wukong. The hook goes through, but it's just to break the Banshee's Veil. Rumble in behind. They should still win this fight quite easily. Alright, so there is the alt coming through. Caitlyn landing a lot of damage onto him. Vault Breaker just about to come up on Vi. I want to see a flay backwards here. It's coming up in just one second. He does body block it, so that's fine. Flay backwards, flay backwards. Eh, that's fine though. He's going to shield himself up. And they should be able to take the inhibitor off of that. So that was just uh, with Kennen not being there. That fight was very close. Uh, some minor misplays, but overall perfectly fine. Yeah, it's only 10 seconds on respawn, so you probably don't want to tank this up too much. Alright, free dragon over to them. I thought they were going to fight for a second. It's possible they could have ended, but they didn't have the communication to do so, and they were running a little low on minions. So Thresh is actually the one pushing out top lane right now. I would like to see him with someone, such as him and Caitlyn just sticking together, never leaving each other's side, because they can take care of pretty much anyone who tries to fight. Alright, Mumu alt is back up. So I want to see a Mumu, Cannon, and Rumble sieging mid lane. And the siege obviously isn't to take a tower because they're, they don't really have tower sieging capabilities, but it keeps the AoE alts together. So if anyone tries to fight, they can either disengage or win that fight just on their own. I would then like to see Thresh and Caitlyn as a duo top lane split push because they, they pair so well together. They're not going to get caught out and they're going to be able to duel anyone who shows up. Then whichever lane they decide to fight, the other lane can then push in and try and take an advantage. Uh, Baron's up in 19 seconds. Caitlyn's pushing bot lane. I don't agree with that because you know Baron's coming up and bot lane's already taken. So I, I see what you're doing. You're wanting to push that in so that they come bot and your team gets Baron. But you're going a little too close on this. Like, you need to play that super safe or you're going to get caught. Looks like they are going to go their own way though. I'd be... Uh, okay, are they going to take this or not? Because they can definitely foreman that. Yeah, that's going to be a free Baron over to them. So th that actually worked out well, bringing people bot lane. But I think she played that a little sloppy in just terms of how she was positioning. She could have easily gotten caught out there, and it could have been very, very bad for her team. So she's offering a nice distraction there. Baron is now secured. We see Vi coming in from the side. Net is used. No summoners left. Q, alt, followed up. And Jinx alt comes through. That's a kill over onto Caitlyn. That being said, you're now stuck inside tower versus an AoE team comp. Alright, so the hourglass comes through from Diana. Thresh actually going to be able to pick that other kill up, it looks like. And Diana's going to get taken down. Wukong trying to come in. Your team is already dead, so fighting here does not make much sense. I have Mumu lands a stun. Going to pick up the kill onto Vi. I want to see them pushing in an ending. Uh, you still have Cannon up. Your team has a reasonably good push left in them. You still have a Mumu ult, you still have Thresh ult, you still have Rumble ult. They can't fight you. Ooh, very nice hook onto him. Uh, the flash goes through though, so the flay does not quite land. Alt coming through from Wukong, landing a lot of damage. It's followed up by Zyra ult. 
Uh, I would be backing out just a little bit more so you don't get knocked up by that. Jinx landing some good rockets across them, but there's the double alt coming in, and that should be game. Threshook not quite landing as he's already dead. Really good gameplay there. I, I have uh, a lot of compliments uh, to Blue Team how they're playing these fights. Uh, just really good job. So they should be able to end the game here. I <laughs> like how it goes back to AD carry. Alright, so really good game, guys. Thank you for uh, trying your best. I, a lot of back and forth here. I'm going to go over final item builds, and then I will answer any questions in chat. Okay, so final item choices. Um, we see a little bit of... Okay. I'm fine with it because they nerf Talisman in terms of the amount of CDR it gives, but that's a hell of a lot of CDR from Thresh. Uh, unless he's running from Masteries, I think he should probably be building something else to make sure that he gets the 40%, but there's nothing wrong with it, and his build is fine. The Locket's very nice versus the AoE. Uh, the the Randwins would be very nice thing is there's a lot of AD. So overall, great picks in terms of items there. Rumble, I mentioned in the pregame that I don't really like Rylize on Rumble, and I'll, I'll just do a quick rundown of why I don't think it's as good as people say. Uh, reason number one, the health was nerfed on it. So if you're building it because you want a defensive item, it's not as effective as it used to be. If you're building it because you want an offensive item, it's okay, but I think there's better options. Um, your E already slows on Rumble. Slows don't stack very well. Your Alt already slows on Rumble and is AoE. AoEs don't don't proc it very well, and alts don't. Sorry, slows don't stack very well. The only thing Rylize works on Rumble for is your Q, and at that point, instead of instead of buying Rylize, why not work on landing your E's a little bit more, and then you already have them slowed, right? It's not the end of the world. It's not a bad item. It's not a noob trap. I'm simply saying there are other items to consider. Uh, he could have gone more AP intensive. He could have gone more defensive. In this game, it worked fine. I'm just trying to give him f food for thought, essentially. Something else to consider. It's not that I think Rylai is a shit item on Rumble. I'm just saying people overvalue it. Let's leave it at that. You're welcome to your own opinion. Um, and do what you would like. Uh, I don't like the Gunblade on Cannon. I think he should go on something else. That's a lot of offensive items here. I'm um, wondering what the Giant Spell is going into. I'm assuming Rylai's. Rylai's is actually really good on Cannon because your Q is a single target skill, your W is a single target skill, your E, I believe, counts as single target skills, your Alt, I'm not sure if it procs as single or multi-target skills, but Rylize is amazing on cannon. So I would like to see that over Gunblade, but he did fine, who cares. Caitlin, pretty standard build. Um, I actually like the Scrying Orb to, to proc her Alt. Good work. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Twin Shadows, someone mentioning on Rumble. Yeah, it works. It's fine on him. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Amumu going full tank, pretty much standard Sunfire randomness. that's what you expect to see on him, so good work there. Zyra, uh, we mentioned in-game that you want to focus on Magic Pen over AP if you're going damage, Zyra. I would like to see the Leandries finished up, and I might have liked to see a defensive item if you were getting caught, which I, I saw happen a few times. Um, just rushing a death cap just isn't that good. Wukong built pretty much what he had to. Uh, Diana, you need to work on your farming is, as a melee versus ranged. I know it's a very difficult thing to do. You did fine, but you did fall really, really far behind in CS. I might have liked to see you picking up some jungle camps using your shield. Uh, Diana is actually pretty good at clearing wraiths, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, Jinx, I would have liked to see... She did get the last whip whisper. Good, good, good. Uh, when, when I originally commented on the game, she didn't finish it yet, so I had that, that minor complaint. I would have liked to see a lifesteal item on her, but you definitely did need these items to be useful, so it's fine. Vi opting to go for Banshee's Veil, Brutalizer, and Randwins. So a good mix of offense and defense there. Um, there's nothing wrong with Brutalizer, and it is pretty standard on her. I, I might like to consider... Is Hydra still good on her? I'm not even going to suggest that, because I, I just haven't seen it built in so long. Um, yeah, no, your, your build is fine. Your build is fine. Uh, Trinity Force is the other damage item you could have considered, but you needed to be tanky. 
Uh, we mentioned in the game that you might have wanted to communicate that Diana should build tanky and you should build damage, only because you were doing so well in the early game and she was having so many problems. That being said, overall, your items are fine. There wasn't anything that wrong in your builds. It was just a lot of little things that added up, mostly in terms of just how blue team played their team comp and how they were able to set things up. No, I, I completely ignore the Hydra. No, don't, don't build it. Anyways, uh, thank you so much to our participants in this game. I'm... I really don't think I can do it.